92.9 Dave FM and it, new REM and very exciting day in the studio with Topher Grace and Teresa Palmer. Thank Good to you see for you guys. Us. Good to see you. I mean, it's not every day you get big movie stars in the studio like you. I know. Where are they? <laughs> so the new movie you guys are here to talk about is Take Me Home Tonight, That's which right. I saw. It's so much fun. It's a throwback to the 80s. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we want to be the first movie that wasn't making fun of the 80s. It doesn't. It was almost like those John Hughes movies that I grew up watching, you know, that I loved, where, you know, it's, it's very easy to make fun of the 80s. A lot of weird stuff, a lot of weird looks happen then. <laughs> but, but we actually wanted to make it like we went back in a time machine and just made it back then. Well, if you're hearing t- Teresa and Te- uh, t- uh, people call you Tez. Tez, everyone uh, does call yeah. me Tez. Okay, yeah. so um, if you go on our web stream right now at Dave.fm, you can see them both. Are you watching yourselves right now? Wow, do I look uh, good. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> oh, damn. my gosh. I'm Tova. I've you seen, are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> better on. than in a mirror because it's the true reflection of how I look. <laughs> so, and it's quite remarkable. Are people <laughs> saying to you a lot, Topher, that, you know, 70s show, now 80s? Is people say, first the 70s, <laughs> now the 80s. <laughs> is <laughs> the next thing going to take place in the 90s? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> and the I go, exact um, question. <laughs> and then how, how would you answer that if you were me? I would say you're... Uh, I, I don't know. Okay. I what would say, movie? sure, I'll do something in the 90s. I mean, Maybe I you can really do not really think it through that much, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Wait, I also did something in the 50s inter- once. Well, no, no, like, are you interested in doing any movies that take place now? Like, yeah, pretty much I've done all every, the other, All the other things other I've done movies. have taken place present. But, like, uh, I was with Dimitri Martin, who plays the guy in the wheelchair in the film. It was hilarious. He's, like, a great comedian. And we were doing press, and he got so sick of the question. He was like... Yes, Topher can't escape time. <laughs> he, everything he does takes place in a decade. That is true. Uh, well, it is like a great night out watching this movie. Is oh, if is, you know you say you know John Hughes movies and those are the movies I grew up in. And that's right. what it reminded me of so much. Oh, oh thank you. So much happens in one night. Well, we wanted to do one of those great one night movies. Like remember Days and Confused? Made totally. The, made in the '90s about the '70s. American Graffiti, which made in the '70s about the '50s. Like no one had done that for our generation, and when I thought about it, that would take us back to th- that kind of time, which are the movies that I grew up on. Yeah, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and uh, Breakfast Club and Say Anything. So. Favorite John Hughes movies? I would have to say it's probably the most popular one, um, The Breakfast Club. I was born in 1986, and so <laughs> I didn't get to. Um, do too much at that time period. But she had detention a lot as a kid, right? Yes. So So you could relate to that. (laughs) Yeah, I uh, actually did. (laughs) So So I I was kind of the naughty kid in school. But uh, I love that movie. I think it has so many different wonderful elements to make it such a special film, and I know we tried to capture that in our movie. And uh, so, Teresa, you you're don't have an Australian accent in the film. No, I do not. I had to work with a dialect coach to transform myself into an American girl. Can you speak like an American girl just to show us how you turned it on and off? Sure. Um, what would you like me to say? <laughs> it's pretty impressive. <laughs> I am yeah. impressed by that. Oh, golly. So what was your favorite movie, Topher, like growing up, an 80s movie? I would say, I really like Sixteen Candles because it's got a little bit of everything. That's what, I love that today, like, you know, there are movies that are all raunch, you know, when you go and see it, or there's, or they're all romantic. But I missed movies like Sixteen Candles that have, like, everything. You know, they're like a... a for all four food groups are in the film. And we tried to, you know, there was dramatic parts of the film. And there, there were. were. Really great, uh, you know, party scenes and, and raunchy, hilarious scenes. So we wanted to do a film that had everything. I love that Anna Faris gets to show her comedic side, but also her dramatic side in this film. Well, yeah, because, yeah. you know, normally she's sort of a bombshell in movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in this movie, she's kind of a regular, everyday girl. Yeah, she's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, well she's she really got to be got twins. Act- yeah. She's my twin. <laughs> I mean, Which I mean, is kind of funny. <laughs> in the movie, she plays your twin, and you kind of do look alike. All right. Well, that's a, a total <laughs> egotistical thing because I'm a producer on it, and I cast her. And it's kind of a weird thing to be like, this person's my equal because she's you know better looking and funnier and cooler. <laughs> but but I, I she bumped up my gene pool. So to, to for Grace, you're listed as an executive producer. That's right. And a regular producer. Uh, no, I, I'm an executive producer and I have a story by credit. My okay. Part. So we kind of came up with the idea um, for this kind of like new kind of Days and Confused or American Graffiti type thing. We thought, oh, that could be in the 80s. And then we made a mix, like an ultimate 80s mix. 
and we cut out all the like rock me Amadeus and well the cheesy yeah, yeah, songs yeah. <laughs> they're gone they got the cut what's wrong with it? rock me Amadeus though well clearly it's one of the best songs of our time <laughs> of all time ever written yeah <laughs> but we ever wanted written. to we wanted to make it the same way we didn't want to have those jokes that are in spoof 80s movies we don't want to have those lame songs we want to have like you know badass songs like uh what do we have in there Betty Davis eyes. Uh, there's so, straight out of Compton. So yeah. many good songs in the movie. Yeah, the it, soundtrack is incredible. It's killer. Okay, so we're gonna go online now and finish this interview at Dave.fm yeah. in the studio with Tez Palmer, Teresa Palmer, and mm-hmm. Topher Grace. Hit up Dave.fm. You can see it all live now. Take Me Home Tonight opens in theaters on March 4th. They've been That's the so subject of what? I gotta start off with a question. Who is Dave? Okay. Where is Dave? So wait, where is Dave though? No, wait, you, Dave's dead? Dave's dead? <laughs> oh my god! Oh no! Oh no, Dave! Oh god! We came all this way. Yeah, just to meet Dave. Dave Why wouldn't gone. you tell us before we went on the air? Dave's Dave dead. Dave cocked it. No, Dave! Well, we didn't put in the movie. Why? Because you were about to hear it so many times on ads <laughs> for the next month. I apologize. Uh, but that, you know, it's it's not about the song. It's really about right. the time and the feeling. And and also, I, I was just sick of hearing it in all these ads. So <laughs> thought it'd be He figured everyone else would be too. It's a great song. It is a wonderful song. Why, we should play that song on Dave. We will play it. Yeah. We'll totally play it. A little Ronnie Spector in the background. A little Eddie Money, L. yeah. You big Eddie Money fan? Um, yes, and the... He's gonna pretend he is. <laughs> He's like, I really am. The, the <laughs> movie's really based on the song. Um, <laughs> when he says... Makes sense. I don't want to take you home till you see the light. That is basically the entire third act of the film. <laughs> you want to see what's me. under this? No, no, forget her. She doesn't see anything. I take it all off. I... I usually never do bottomless unless do see the scene needle. really <laughs> calls for it. But I did. I was happy to do it, even in scenes where it wasn't after the love scene. He I would just, just drop his pants randomly. Even if the shot only, if the shot yeah, just came up. This. Yeah. You know you want this. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a, because I'm a professional. Oh, yep. I don't, uh, I bought the, the question was, did I buy the hat just for the trip to suck up to you guys? <laughs> and the answer is yes. I, I'm actually not into sports in any way. I was born without the sports gene. I was awful at playing them. He has a hat for every city on this tour. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Really? Yeah, yeah. I just go in the airport because I'm allegiant to no team. So I just kind of go, uh, buy the hat in the airport. But I am a big fan of the A's. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's been, been worse yeah. for him. I think you've been doing this for a few weeks now, yeah? That's right. I did a little bit with Fogler, who played Barry in the film, who mm-hmm. we should say is amazing. amazing. It's like a real breakout role for him, yeah. A real yeah. breakout role, and, I mean, for those people who really love cocaine, I mean, lots yeah, of Yeah, there's a lot of it in our Whoever's movie. I was watching Dave FM at 9 o'clock in the morning, whatever it is, <laughs> you probably are on cocaine. <laughs> yeah, this is the film for you, all right? Yeah, right. The first film I did was Traffic. Very good in that movie. Thank you. And uh, it's okay. He was uh, Stevens. You know, probably the greatest director alive today. And for that to be the first director I worked with, uh, amazing experience. And uh, and Michael Douglas was the first kind of movie star I worked with. And I've loved doing movies with people like Michael Douglas. And I did one with Dennis Quaid. But the really great thing about this movie was getting to work with my peer group. I'd wanted to work with Anna Ferris for a long time. She's an amazing comedian. And uh, Dan, I saw on Broadway, he won the Tony. And he has just a breakout role in this. And Teresa was amazing. I mean, you want to work with these people. You know, ev- I think everyone, there are at least five $20 million movie stars in our movie just, you know, five years from now. So it was great to be able Very to work sweet. with them all together. <laughs> uh, you do not understand how many people tell me that. I, I, I got recognized for her the other day at the airport. But thank you. I, I take that as a compliment. It I must think. be She's because awesome. you're both so bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Renadio, thank you for the question. I think uh, um, comedy is really hard. I mean, it's a lot of fun to be joking around here like we are now, but um, to get the timing right so that an audience that sees the movie nine months after you shot it is laughing, I think it's really hard. I've always been really, really glad that I started on a sitcom because even though there are elements of it being filmed, 
there's also a live audience of like 300 people. So you get to kind of test out what works with a big audience. So I've been very thankful for that.